Hello and welcome to AV Cyberactive Cybersecurity Channel. My name is Avinash and I've been a cybersecurity professional for more than 10 years now. We are currently in session 3 of Cybersecurity Q&A to help you understand the basic security questions you get asked in interviews to help you ace that technical round. Uh, these also happen to be the most asked questions, which I'm going to help you understand at a very basic level. Let's get started. Okay. And our today's topic of discussion is going to be cross-site scripting. Now, what does it look from a user's perspective? Well, you're just browsing the website honestly. You go into the website, input your details and then all of a sudden you know that you've been hacked now how does this all play out let's try to understand that so what's a xss or cross-site scripting at the very core it's injecting a script so when does that cross-site scripting happen it happens when a data enters a web application through an untrusted source and most probably or most frequently it gets in through a web request. Secondly, the data that is included in the dynamic content that is sent to the web user is not even getting validated for malicious content. So if a script is included with the tag or the input in the web request, that gets executed on the web application side. Also, what are the traits or what are the key features of a cross-site scripting? It's either persistent or it's either non-persistent. It's also a user-side or you can say a browser-side attack. And it always attacks the vulnerable web applications to inject the code or store its code. Next, what's, what are the types of cross-site scripting? The most common ones are these three, which is stored cross-site scripting, which is our persistent, reflected cross-site scripting, which is non-persistent, and DOM cross-site scripting, which means document model, object model. Uh, in this session, we're not going to discuss all three of them. It would need a dedicated video for each one of them to explain, but I'll certainly go through the reflected cross-site scripting, which is the non-persistent version of it. Okay? Now, reflected cross-site scripting, XSS. What is it that comes to your mind when you think of reflected XSS or reflection, reflected? You think of something getting reflected back, you look at the mirror, your image of yours is reflecting get, get back at you. So something similar is also happening here. The perpetrator or the bad actor is trying to reflect some information back to the victim's browser so that its motive is getting fulfilled. That's what's happening here. Now, let's bring up our bad guy or the perpetrator. So the script is activated through a link which sends a request to a website with the vulnerability that enables the execution of the malicious script. This vulnerability is a result of the incoming request if not properly sanitized or checked during the development of the web application allows the manipulation of the web app functions and the malicious script gets activated then the intended information gets reflected back because it is of course vulnerable and is now sent back to the perpetrator now you would think why would the user even click on the link and this is where the user is lured into social engineering so the bad actor would distribute the malicious link to the perpetrator 
typically in an email or a very lucrative looking email or website. Uh, the link is embedded or an anchor text provokes the user to click on it, which then initiates the cross-site script request uh, to the exploited or the vulnerable website, reflecting the attack back to the user. Now, there are quite a few things happening out here, okay? Let's try to understand that. Uh, so we got a perpetrator, the victim, and the vulnerable website. Step one, the perpetrator will discover the website having the vulnerability and will enable the scripts for injection. Step two, perpetrator will then try to inject the website with the malicious script that steals the visitors you know, cookie sessions or any confidential information. Step three, the most dangerous part. For each visit, the malicious script is reflected back at the victim and the script gets activated. Then as the perpetrator wanted, the uh, at step four, the visitor session cookie or the uh, secret information is then sent back to the perpetrator so that the bad actor can now use it to its advantage. Now you must be sitting out there thinking, how does that impact me? Fine, cross-site scripting. Well, here's what you should consider. The actual impact of a cross-site scripting attack is generally dependent on the nature of application and its functionality on the data. Uh, it also depends on the status of the compromised user. I'll take three examples. If it's a regular, just an informational or a brochureware information on application, a web application in this case, where all of your users are just anonymous and the information is wholly public, the impact will obviously be very minimal. But if an application is hold, holding sensitive data, such as banking transactions, your emails, your healthcare records, then the impact is going to be significantly more and very serious. Third, if the compromised user or the victim has uh, you know, el elevated the privileges with the application, then the impact will be very critical, allowing the attacker to take full control of your of the vulnerable application and compromise probably all the users and their data. How about that? Now that you know the cross-site scripting and how it works and how dangerous it is, what can you do to protect yourself? I'll give you two perspectives. One from a user's perspective, another one from a developer's perspective. As a user, do not click on links on that come via email from unknown senders, okay? Those lucrative emails, those lotteries that you win from a Nigerian king, <laughs> those are not happening. Everything is fake. Do not click on the link on a website's comment section, okay? If you go to a shady website, if you see there's a lucrative link to win or something and you would have to contact somebody else, just, just don't con con comment on those links. So, and the last one, social media feed of unknown users. Okay. From developer's perspective, well, preventing cross-site scripting is trivial in some cases, but can be much harder depending on the complexity of the application and the ways it handles the user controllable data. So, but in general, the effectively preventing cross-site scripting vulnerabilities is, like, is likely to involve a combination of the few measures that which I'm going to talk about. First of all, input validation. Filter input on arrival at the point where the user is uh, user input is being received. Just fill, keep your filter as strict as possible and nothing unexpected should be entered. Second, encode data at output. What does that mean? So at the point where 
the user controllable data is output in the HTTP responses, encode the output to prevent it from interpreted as an active content. So, but so depending on the output context, this might require applying combinations of HTML, URL, um, JavaScript, and CSS encodings. Next one, use appropriate response headers. To prevent cross-site scripting and HTTP responses that aren't you know, intended to contain any uh, uh, HTML or Java, uh, you can use the content type options in the headers to ensure that the browsers do not interpret those responses uh, yeah, and or browsers in, interpret the responses in a way you intended intended it to be designed. And the last one, content security policies. As the last line of defense, what you can do is you can use a CSP con content security policy to reduce the severity of any uh, uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that may still occur. All right. And at the end, I'll leave it at the side note. That is the difference between SQL and XSS. Now, the basic difference between SQL and XSS is XSS is a client-side vulnerability, which we just studied. It's a browser-side attack on the application, web application-side attack, whereas SQL, a structured query language, is a server-side attack or a vulnerability that targets the application's database. I'll make a dedicated video on this and link it on this one so we can get more clarity on that one here. All right, now with that, I'll leave you at the scenic mountain scene so you can enjoy the view. And thank you for watching my channel. Do comment and subscribe if you